Big Boy Reliance reports a mixed second quarter. Consumer-facing businesses put up a strong show with the quarterly revenue from the retail business, uh, while the oil and oil to chemical business disappoints. The company also announced restructuring of the EPC business and a demerger as well as a listing of Geo Financial Services. ICICI Bank hits a lifetime high after a strong second quarter, while HUL's margin misses estimates despite lower ad spends. The stock is under pressure. The top FNO gainer today is MCX. After a standout second quarter, the average daily traded value in options raises five times to nearly 31,000 crores versus 6,000 crores in the corresponding quarter last year, and that weighs positively on the stock. IDFC First Bank's slippages remain elevated, while the other income drives a profit beat. While for RBL Bank, the operating profit falls for the fifth straight quarter. Both stocks are under pressure in trade. Norris Labs cuts revenue guidance for FY23, says it will achieve only 90% of the previously stated goal of $1 billion in revenue by FY23. The stock falls further by about 6%. Well, the markets have drifted a little bit lower yet again. Remember, we made that attempt to go towards the 17,800-odd mark, but from there, we have seen some selling. Adani Ports has moved to the low point of the day. Bajaj Finance as well is under some pressure. That stock's taken a bit of a knock. The problem, though, is the Nifty Bank, clearly. One would have thought we would have started making our way towards fresh all-time highs, but from around that 41,550 maglam, we have seen some selling. And the Nifty Bank, that's the one that's getting a bit of a knock. Number of stocks declining way more than the number of stocks advancing as we speak. That's correct, Nigel. You know, so that's where the overall setup for the frontline indices and broader markets is concerned. But what is heartening is that at an index level, the mid-cap index is outperforming. And that comes after a very long time. Yes. You know, the Nifty was uh, uh, gaining over the last seven straight sessions. The mid-cap index was underperforming. But even as the Nifty meanders around the flat line today with the Nifty bank underperforming, the mid-cap index, at least at an index level, is at the high point of trade. So to that extent, the second half will be extremely crucial. Remember, India has been outperforming. Forming. And today is the penultimate day uh, ahead of the October series expiry. So let's see what happens in the second half. That is something that we'll be watching out for. But a bunch of stocks which are lower in today's trading session are financials. And one of them is IDFC First Bank. The slippages for the company remain elevated uh, on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, and we, we've seen uh, the other income drive a beat on their profit versus what the street was anticipating this time around. The stock, as a result of which, down almost 3% in today's trading session. We have with us the MD and CEO, V. Vedinathan, joining in to tell us more. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Mr. Vedinathan, for joining in. Uh, first up, uh, Diwali, greetings to you and your team as well as your family. Um, now, let's talk business. As far as the slippages are concerned, over 1,000 crores, closer uh, towards 1,200 crores this quarter. It's elevated. Uh, you know, how long before this uh, goes out of the system, what kind of annualized slippage ratio can you guide fra from here? I think you're uh, just looking at only one one part of the parameter and that too. Uh, now, the way to think about it is that uh, the best way to understand hmm. uh, the upcoming asset quality of any book, uh, not just the NPA, as you know, the NPA of the bank of the retail business has come down to 2.06% gross. And the net NP of the retail business is 0.7%. I think you should have take a closer look at that as well. Hmm. But the even closer look you should look at is the look at the uh, SMA business, as all of you understand the financial terms. Hmm. Now, in the SMA business, our which is a pre-NPA stage, it is down to 1%. 1% of the retail uh, SMA. So you can understand there's not much to flow from here to there. So in the nature of a business, something flows, something writes back, uh, or you know, flow back, that's part of life. So I want to just tell you that uh, we are, our provisioning coverage ratio, on the retail book, is right. now a seventy-seven percent. So, so you should you should look forward to actually uh, lesser slippages. You should look forward to uh, lesser provisions um, uh, from the bank going forward. So let's let's uh, simplify that for our viewers then, because there are so many moving parts, as you said. Uh, what kind of uh, gross and net NPA are you guiding for by the end of this year? And uh, on a uh, you know on an annualized basis, credit cost. Uh, do you think you will do less than one and a half percent? Because a couple of brokerages are building in 1.6 to 1.8 percent for the next few two years. Yes, I think now you you come to the right question. <laughs> so basically, the uh, the right uh, benchmark is credit costs, and the right benchmark is uh, uh, gross NPA and net NPA. So let me address the uh, credit cost question. The credit card question for uh, this this quarter was only 1.2 percent, and uh, uh, those people are guiding for 1.7, 1.8. 
let me just say they are uh, guiding on the they are they are factoring in a, a higher amount uh, uh, by their uh, whatever but from our point of view for this financial year uh, we expect the credit cost to remain low for the rest of the two quarters as well so that's on the credit cost front now npa on the npa front i told you retail npa has come down to 0.7% on a net basis which we feel very good about uh, and uh, more importantly the at even at a bank level i don't only get focus on retail even at a bank level if only you take out infrastructure because we all know it's a legacy it's stuff and it'll go away in due course take out infrastructure gross npa will be 2.2% even now and uh, net npa is uh, uh, you know about 0.7% ex infrastructure so really let me just say that uh, uh, any which way you look at it whether sma credit cost gross npa net npa whatever the bank is looking uh, smelling very good now all right uh, morning mr vaidyanathan and nigel on this side thanks so much for joining in well we are taking the numbers down and uh, you know we're taking your point on board as well which are the correct as well as uh, which are the incorrect questions according to you but i have a crucial no, question nothing is incorrect just nothing is incorrect question okay. but i want to just clarify is that hmm. gross net and credit loss are the we have got that in- we have got that yeah. i wanted to focus on your nims they're closer to around 6% odd <laughs> now you have a sizable legacy borrowings which is high cost which is being replaced by low cost new borrowings in turn that will be good for nims i've gone through your presentation out there my question to you is could this repayment take up a significant part of your new casa your new fts and also would sufficient liabilities be available for future growth plans go ahead sir very, very good questions because the uh, uh, if you notice something is interesting about the way we're building a bank our loan book grows by 25 but deposit grows by 37 mm-hmm. so there is a reason for that so we gro- take a deposit and we use a part of it to even uh, you know keep paying the high cost bonds as they come along and we also use deposits to grow so uh, frankly you know we grown deposit 37% even into the rest of the year we see our deposits growing uh, very strongly you can see the results for next quarter you can see the results <clears throat> quarter after that we 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 have been very basically inflow of money into a bank is very very strong so so you are saying that the nims will continue to hold around this vicinity around the vicinity like 5.8 5.96 to around 5.9% we can hold on to that number yes yes definitely and, and loan growth in, in the corridor of 5.8 to 6 okay. through the rest of this year you can expect nim to happen you can expect deposits to come you sure. can expect loan loan book to grow sure it's all coming and loan growth of around 25 to around 30% no i i never say that no, i only say it. Yeah, twenty twenty to twenty five is what we guide 20, for. Twenty five, got it. Okay, yeah, right now it's coming at twenty five. Twenty <clears throat> to twenty five uh, is uh, the loan growth. You know, just wanted to understand uh, a little more on your savings account as well. Casa currently is at around fifty one point three percent of your overall deposits. You had earlier a target of just around thirty odd percent. Where does this number settle going forward? What do you think would your absolute uh, or rather ideal borrowing mix be? well uh, at, at around 50% we are very happy okay uh, if it comes anything about that's a bit of a bonus but uh, we are quite quite happy we like to keep raising deposits term deposits as well so think of it like with stay in the current mix and what proportion of your uh, funded assets are currently fixed how much of that are variable variable is about 38% 38% all right, all right. Uh, you know mr vaidyanathan besides the bank's operational performance is another sticky issue what's the plan on the idfc limited hmm. potential merger with the bank We had chatted the last quarter as well. In August 2022, you said that there are some procedural issues which were pending on the merger front. What's the plan? Any update on that front? Really, no update on that front. So, I mean, uh, should we assume then that it has gotten uh, postponed to the next fiscal, or is there still hope of it happening in this fiscal? <laughs> no, no, I can't get specifically answer any questions on this front. As you know, uh, you know, both parties have said that uh, the intent is definitely there. but mm-hmm. as in as in when the procedural matters uh, materialize mm-hmm. things will happen you know it's uh, the, the, we, there's plenty of speculation out there mr vaidyanathan so we ask you so uh, you know by when will a decision be taken if uh, if you could give us a timeline at least what to say and i really don't want to comment on the front okay. because see when you when parties agree conceptually mm-hmm. procedure takes its own time i okay. really don't want to put a better date to it okay All we'll right. have to probe you on that maybe the next time we chat but i want to also talk about your digital I- initiatives you know i've been speaking a lot about that uh, again i've gone through you know a couple of notes that you'll have put out i'm keen to understand the growth in the app downloads could you give us a number if at all your website logins or maybe the growth in the website app based transactions as well just to get a sense about the 
next big thing that's the digital push well, definitely i think our bank has building uh, very good uh, uh, stacks to make it happen i think our web we have close to about 5 million downloads now which is not a small number our, our google rating on our app is really very good uh, and uh, generally speaking you talk to any customers about our bank they'll tell you good things about our bank in terms of their experience uh, with us right i mean so, okay we take that point but you know while you are growing your digital penetration etc you are also looking at uh, opening uh, reaching your branches to around what 800 to 900 this as compared to 650 670 that you have right now what explains that i mean is there any scope for rationalization there i ask this primarily because uh, the big trigger that everyone's pinning their hopes on for idfc first is reduction in the cost to income ratio i mean uh, how do you take that uh, you know in your favor going from here the uh, uh, the short answer in branches of course we will stay on our path of the target of maybe 800000 branches to put out in 2025 etc that that plan all stays if we don't change strategies like this every day in and day out that plan is broadly on whatever we said at the time of the beginning of the merger 2019 let me say into 2425 every one of them were on track including branches let me do that but uh, let me leave, leave it at that but coming back to your more substantial question about uh, cost to income and all that uh, you should actually remember that we are a five year old bank so uh, you know you're comparing us with banks who have been there for 25 years and 30 years is uh, you know so our bank is making making rapid uh, strides so those banks are not exactly borrow right. 8.8% 25000 crores no, no, just, those banks are not, just, you know, we, we so, take your point we take yeah. your point and we're comparing you to only your own guidance and not other banks because you said that you intend to reach this number by 50 to 55% by fy25 currently no, is 73% so where does yeah, it got it. yeah so can you no, give no, us a glide no, path i got it so uh, i appreciate that now let's just come back to this uh, specific question about uh, cost income see i've uh, already put it out publicly that just three i items the credit card launch the launch of branches atms network hiring of about 15000 people to man those branches etc or, or handle those branches uh, all that uh, has uh, costed money in the setup stage our theory is that by 24 25 most of those uh, investments will start paying back mm. uh, that's how the model works so uh, uh, our understanding that our return on equity which is right now touched 10% pretty quickly as you notice from 0 to 10 in 3 years our return on equity at just overall cost uh, will start touching uh, will start crossing 15 by uh, end of um, uh, as per the guided plan uh, by the exit quarter of fy25 or so so uh, so we feel that this bank will not even stop at 15 roe the core economics are such that it'll take us towards more like the 16 17 18ish roe but we will get there okay all so, right all right we have got that uh, mr vaidyanathan you have given us uh, you know a fair bit of details and the, to be fair the last time we chatted you guided for a couple of numbers and you did achieve that so we look forward to chatting up with you sometime during this quarter or maybe we have our date with regard to your quarter 3 numbers as well wishing you and all thanks, the best thanks to both of you and to all viewers of cnbc a very very happy diwali uh, and we look forward to uh, engaging thank you appreciate <clears throat> you stopping by sir well for the time being though we'll have to slip into a short break with news that the markets have moved a little bit lower we'll come back and we'll get uh, uh, chatting with uh, the management of vip we'll also get you our mc pro stock as well save with us Welcome back. Let's get chatting with the management of VIP Industries. It was a strong quarter. The revenues rose about 50% in the second quarter. Numbers have also surpassed those seen in pre-COVID levels. The stock, uh, you know, moving off lows in today's trading session, but in the morning trading session, it did rather well. We do have it, have with us Mr. Piramal, who is joining in to detail the numbers and give us more in terms of the second half of this year. Thanks a lot, Mr. Piramal, for joining in. It was a good set of numbers in the second quarter. The first quarter also. was a record quarter for you so that's where my question stems from because the first half of this year you've done revenues a little over 1100 crores usually for a business like yours it's the second half which does a little more revenues than the first half as well you had earlier guided for 2000 crores in terms of uh, this year's revenue do you think you can surpass that do maybe 22 23 hundred crores this year well on the basis of the first half uh, i think we should be able to do that because let me uh, slightly correct you what you said that our revenues are equal in most in, mm. in both the half mm. because the first quarter april to june is our largest right. quarter okay and the second quarter is our weakest quarter but this year there was an exception mm. that the second quarter has done much better than what we had uh, planned for mm. 
And let's say we got nearly about uh, 60 crores extra sales than what we had budgeted. So if we equal, if the second half is the same as the first half, then we should be 2200 crores. But definitely we should uh, do more than 2000 crores. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Mr. Piramel, and greetings, season's greetings from here at CNBC TV to all of us, uh, to you, your team, as well as your family. Uh, so around 2,000 crores at least, and 2,200 crores could possibly be on the cars if you just replicate yes. what you did in the first half. Uh, so if the trend is the same, like, you know, I mean, the sales were quite buoyant in the first half. Yes. Except the month of May, yeah. mm. and maybe a little bit June, but all the other four, five, four, four and a half months. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, Mr. Piramal, then I think you should guide for at least 2,200 crores because you had a bit of a blip in the first really? half. So, 2,200 crores at least? Well, we normally don't give. Yeah, but we have already done okay, 1,100 crores. Yeah. So, we're holding you at 2,200 crores. Give us two more numbers then. Margins, what's the outlook from here on? There has been some improvement out there. Point number one. Yeah. So, you give us a steady state. Mid teens is, I think, what you were hinting at. And the second factor is market share, you had slipped from around 50%. But in the last few quarters, again, you're creeping up in market share. When do you get to that 50% market share? You know, I have been sort of making some mistakes in announcing the market shares. Hmm. And this market share, by the way, is only with related to the top three companies, you know, right. whose uh, figures we have access to and sort of they're more accurate. So our peak market share uh, in the pre-COVID area in the last three, four years prior to COVID was uh, 49%. And the lowest was uh, as low as uh, 40 percent uh, before uh, the COVID ended. And now we are at about 43 percent. So we have definitely clawed uh, three, three and a half percent. And uh, we hope uh, uh, we, we want to claw back at least two more percent in this fiscal year. Percent. So we are working quite hard. Of course, competition is also working Mr. Piramil, quite hard, but I think now... Mr. Piramil, are... apologies for interrupting you. So, 45% by the end of the year is the target? Yes. And margins? Yes. Margins also are gross margins, like should be about 50%, which are about 49%, I mm -hmm. think, in the last quarter. EBITDA margins, sir. EBITDA margins is what we want. Margins, uh, we hope to do about uh, between 15 and 18%. All right, between 15 and 18% uh, on your EBITDA margins. Just a, a question on uh, your market share itself. I'm looking at uh, your channel mix, and uh, CSD has come down from, what, 9% to close to around 6% right now. Uh, was that purely on account of, uh, you know, other companies, uh, namely Safari, etc., gaining market share there? Or uh, you're, you're looking... No, no, no. Hmm. I don't think 6% is the right figure. I don't know. It's from, quarter, it's from your presentation. It's from your presentation, sir. Yeah, but I think for the first half, it's about 12%. Okay. And CSD has generally come down for everybody, you know, because the other channels have uh, increased. And uh, this government has actually tightened up CSD. So there are no leakages and all that in the okay. from the CSD to the general trade. But our market shares are quite good in CSD. And we definitely, uh, we were the weakest in uh, e-commerce. Okay. But uh, we, have, we are also gaining uh, good market share there. So where this increase of 2%, 3% of market share has come from all the areas where we were weaker. You know, like we had lost a lot of sales yeah. from the group closure. So that was the largest customer. Hmm. So that also we have made up uh, directly. We know that we have made up 50% through other uh, large uh, stores, similar yes. stores. But and the other 50% also, some right. of it has probably come through our retail stores, the uh, MBOs in the high street. Take that point, uh, Mr. Piramal. Thank you so much for joining in. As always, not out of questions, not out of content, but definitely out of time. Wish to converse with you more often uh, during the quarter as well. But uh, the street likes what you're saying with regards to your revenue and margin outlook in particular and the market share intent because the stock has now moved into the green, currently at the high point of trade. That, ladies and gentlemen, was VIP. With that, we step into a sh second segment or a, rather a special segment where you get we, we have, where we get you a few ideas for profit uh, coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. Bharat Jinani joins in with a stock that he's been tracking closely. Bharat. We'll speak on uh, Trends Limited. The company posted all-time high revenues in quarter one FY23. Apart from the main apparel business, the company is witnessing strong traction in the emerging categories such as beauty and personal care, footwear and innerwear. We expect a record performance in quarter two FY23 as well. 
The company is going for a rapid store expansion across both the formats. That is the flagship website brand as well as the value format under the Zudio brand. Strong response for the recently opened stores is encouraging the company to go in for a rapid expansion. The company is also announcing its digital business. The launch of super app Tata Neo by the parent is expected to significantly enhance the customer base for the company. The company is witnessing strong increase in the loyal customer base under the Vestile club membership program. The company has amongst the best matrices in the apparel industry owing to the 100% own brand portfolio and lower discounting. The company has strong balance sheet with debt free status at the net level. The performance of joint ventures and subsidiaries is also expected to improve. Are some of the parts valuation suggests a target price of 1760 for the stock. For that, Bharat, well, we'll slip into a short break. You come back, continue to focus on markets and stock specific action. Welcome back. Well, the markets are uh, holding around that 17,700 odd mark. Keep an eye out on Rajratan wires. Earlier today, the stock took a hard knock. It was down closer on 7-8% the last time I checked. But from the lows, there seems there is some bottom fishing, it appears. So remember, the stock was at around 1,400 rupees just around two months or so ago. Now, in fact, it corrected to around 838.40 earlier today, back at around 920. The other one is Orient Paper. Remember, that was a rank underperformer in this year so far from the paper stocks. Now it's, uh, you know, been an outperform actually in the last two months, if I remember correctly. Uh, year to date, it's now up closer on 30%. I recall that we put out a piece in September, and at that point of time, it was one of the big underperformers in the year so far. C currently, it's moving with good <sighs> momentum. Well, for the time being, me and Mangalam have run out of time on this edition of Chartbuster. Stay with us. Trading R comes up next. Brought to you by Big.